What should Christians do with their wealth? Oh, no, Gare, follow. There you go. Talking about money again. You got a complex? No, yeah, I love money. Listen, I just like to make sure that I read the Bible, make sure I'm using it rightly. Not unrightly. I just report on what I read. And that's what the Bible says. Luke 12, 33 says that we are to sell all we have and give the money to the poor. Oh, man, you're kidding me. Well, if everybody did that, Everybody be poor to be no one to give anything, right? Today I'm going to show you more accurately that we are able to be, we're, we're called to be generous, to give rightly in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the point. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. You know, reason for truth, the truth comes first, reasons come last, but we're always in constantly learning, and we'll misread these scriptures and the news and everything else, so we're always in constantly learning. And we stop learning, we stop teaching, we at least stop teaching well and accurately. So let's just jump right in. In Luke 12, 33, again, Jesus literally says, Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that do not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys oh boy really okay well, is jesus commanding us to sell everything we have and become i guess live on the streets i don't know become something different perhaps the answer is both and that for some people we're called to be full-time missionaries serve the lord that doesn't mean you're poor it just means you have less money than in america it means you're poor because you know this is the way it is and listen even the poor are rich here i don't you know you have to work all that out but for most followers of Jesus Christ, we must zoom out to understand this verse more widely. And that what's Jesus really saying? He's saying, well, he's telling you to sell what you have. In contrast to the world's hoarding of possessions, the disciples must be generous with what God has given them. Jesus says to only provide yourselves with the money bags. They do not grow old. What does this mean? Well, it means basically investing what you, who you are, what you have, your talents and your money. Make sure that you give to those in need who are doing God's work right? In other words, other things and helping other people. Don't just hoard it for yourself. America's got a big problem with this right now. You've got the extremely rich, when I mean extremely rich, and then you have the poor. Middle class is getting squeezed out. I would say the middle class is probably the most biblical and those in, in the poor who are striving to do better. You know, if you want to just be rich, okay, there's very godly people who are rich, but there are few of them who know how to handle rich as well and power. Very few. Just look at Washington, D.C. Enough said. The answer regarding what Jesus meant by money bags that do not grow old is by serving God and others. You can invest in the eternal future, your eternal future. You can't take possessions with you into the next life, folks, but you can certainly stir up eternal, uh, store up eternal treasures by giving to others and using what you have rightly for God's glory. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, 17, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. In other words, Paul had this verse in mind when he wrote about the material gift that the Philippians sent to him. And today, when we give like the Philippian church did, it's added to your credit or your account in the same way. And it, it's, a, it, it's a credit term. Paul's using business terminology here because Philippians, they would understand that. They're kind of like a commerce center. The bottom line is that the Philippians' gift was producing a spiritual profit for Paul and for God and for themselves. In turn, the Philippians were made full because of their gifts to God and what would give it, God would give them in return according to his riches out of his abundant wealth. Does that mean God made them more wealthy? Well, perhaps he did, but wealth and better, you know, closer to being with God and other blessings that are not material or wealth. So God more amply took care of the, the Philippians. So to answer the question as to, is Jesus commanding us to sell everything we have and follow him as foreign or domestic missionaries or does this mean something else, or is that what God's telling us? Okay, we don't have to be poor, maybe just to be a missionary. Well, that depends on God's specific calling upon your life. But for most of us, generically speaking, the answer is no. Most of us are not called to sell everything and go and live in the streets of Chicago or New York and feed the poor or go to, you know, Africa or Asia or South America, or Central America, just be, you know, in the mountains and, and, and be a missionary. For yes, for some of them, yes, they're called to become full-time missionaries and serve the Lord. But for most of us, we're called to serve the Lord right where we're at when God found us. We must also be generous to give rightly in the name of Jesus Christ to those who are in those places, 
and for those who are here doing a good work amongst us. Strictly giving for humanitarian reasons is nice, but it's void. It it's, doesn't have any eternal impact for your life. I mean, it's fruitless to give anything or do anything in just the name of secularism. Hey, I fed the poor. Well, okay, if you didn't reflect the love and truth of Jesus Christ in the Bible, it's fruitless. I think for the most part, unless they reflect back on you somehow as a Christian, it counts not for your heavenly account, for the most part, I should say. We as Christians must be careful not to attempt to build up storehouses of riches for reasons for ego, false security, because those riches and ego, well, they all, they're a mirage. They, they grow wings, they fly away, by the way, at some point, guaranteed. More rightly, you and I are to provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old. Luke 12, 33. Listen, there is neither a conviction to sell everything and live in the jungles of Amazon nor a license to amass unnecessary wealth. It's, it's a command, a conviction to look at the words of Jesus and the act, act on them in a way that impacts your life eternal, you know, your eternal investment. So why? Because, listen, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Or as Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This can be a very difficult passage for Americans in particular. And Americans need to amass some wealth. I think, no, I should say all Christians should amass wealth. So they have resources to do good things with that wealth. But if we hoard it or we use it for ungodly reasons, well, that's bad. So there's a fine line there to be walked. But I get it because we all live in the United States of America. Let's approach our wealth and this biblical passage with an open mind and heart. I promise you that taking this passage into account will change your life, folks, because blessing and abundance and God's provision to you is a real thing, okay? And we have to be careful. We use what we have. We glorify God. But in the end, in closing, Christians everywhere, but especially in the USA, have a mandate and to do what we are commanded to do with our wealth. Luke 12, 33 says, we're to sell all we have and give the money to the poor, more accurately saying that we are to be generous. Give rightly. That's what he's saying in Jesus Christ. Not out of our excess, but sacrificially. I think what Jesus is saying, are you really willing to sacrifice for me? Then go give everything. What he's saying is give up what the value is. That I don't think he's saying sell everything. He's saying, are you willing to sell everything? If I really ask that of you, that's the real question. That's the issue of the heart. Let's pray on that, study this passage, see how God works in your life and mine regarding his provision and the blessing in our lives and in our mission. So God's blessings to you. Thanks for tuning in. Tough subject, but we need to hear it every once in a while. We do. We live in a very affluent world that's becoming less affluent every day. More affluent, way more for some and way less for others. But correction is coming. So God's blessings to you. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you do a few things. Get equipped at equippedacademy.com. Join my community. Want to see over there, stephengarafalo.com. Love to see you over there. You're going to get all kinds of articles and cool personal stuff. I don't just publish on regular standard, typical social media. And before you leave, make sure you just like this and share it with your friends. I'd appreciate that. And then bam, God see us at Easter, Italian right hook. Hit that subscribe button so I won't miss you at the next episode. And we'll see you at the next episode. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. It is, as you reason for truth for today. <laughs>